Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We had uh, started the module of thermal design and uh, last lecture I uh, told you about power losses, the different power loss that take place in power electronic converters and uh, we were mainly discussing the semiconductor device losses. So, let us uh, look more into it about the loss calculation of semiconductor devices. Now, last lecture I took example of a very simple converter, the buck converter, where loss calculations are going to be much simpler because the waveforms, your uh, the waveforms across the devices, the device currents and the device voltage waveforms are very simple in nature. But uh, for every converter that is not going to be so the device voltage waveforms and current waveforms uh, may be much more complex. So, uh, to see what is the challenge there, let us uh, take the example of edge bridge converter. So, this is the familiar edge bridge converter uh, which we have discussed before. So, uh, just uh, to refresh your memory. So, here uh, if uh, this uh, T A plus and uh, your T B minus are conducting that means these two diagonal switches are conducting. So, at that time the voltage that appears over here is uh, plus V D C and uh, if the opposite two diagonal devices are conducting that is your T B plus and T A minus then the voltage that appears here is equal to minus V D C. And if the current direction is positive that is it is in this direction then your uh, these two devices T A plus and T B minus the transistors are going to carry the current. But if the current direction is opposite it is in this direction then it is the diodes D, D A plus and T B minus which are going to carry the current. So, depending on the direction of your output current I O it uh, gets decided whether the transistor will conduct or whether the diode will be conducting. And uh, apart from the diagonal switching combinations there are other switching combinations possible that means the upper two devices may be on or the lower two devices may be on. And further we had uh, seen two modulation strategies also before one is your uh, bipolar PWM. And the second is unipolar PWM. So, let us uh, look into those waveforms. So, this is the bipolar PWM with sinusoidal reference, where uh, whenever this carrier is smaller then the reference waveform that is here you can see that then what happens is that at that time the output is equal to plus V D C. This is what we see here this is equal to plus V D C. And uh, whenever your uh, the opposite happens the output voltage becomes equal to minus V D C. And uh, this continues and then if we take the average of it. So, then this is that uh, waveform the average of the on the switching uh, time interval this is that V O average that uh, you will be obtaining. So, this is your V O bar the V O average and this is your plus V D C and this is minus V D C. Now, if we plot the voltage waveform and current waveform across the devices now we have got 4 devices. Um, actually 8 of them, um, it 4 IGBTs and 4 diodes, 4 anti-parallel diodes. So, um, we should uh, draw the voltage waveforms and current waveforms across all of them to find out how much is the conduction loss and uh, switching loss that will be taking place. Now, uh, here I have shown only for your uh, 4 of them that is your uh, voltage and current through the diode of T A plus and of the transistor T A plus and also your uh, voltage across uh, the upper switch T B plus and the diode 
uh, dB plus. So, this dA plus voltage and current uh, through it and this diode dA plus voltage across it and current through it. Now, voltage across both of these dA plus and dA plus uh, will be same and uh, also have shown for D, dB plus and dB plus again the voltage will be the same across both the devices it is the current which may be different. So, this is the voltage waveform across uh, TA plus and this is the current waveform for TA plus and this is the current waveform for DA plus and this is the load current I O. Now, here what we see is that this is uh, when the switch voltage is is uh, 0 or uh, low that means the switch is on at that time. So, here uh, this is your uh, 0 you can say that and this is equal to VDC. So, here your uh, switch voltage is low so the device is on. So, at that time we know that if the current direction is positive so uh, then your transistor will be conducting. So, here for this uh, time interval what we see that the current is positive. So, here this is the same current that appears over here. So, this is the 0 of the current. Further again what we see when again T A plus is on at that time if the current is positive. So, I O becomes equal to your I T A plus and in those intervals while the current is clearly positive over here and the switch is on at that time uh, what we see is that uh, this uh, diode current is equal to 0 that means your diode D A plus is not conducting. When the current becomes negative and then the switch is turned on for example, these intervals here the current has uh, become negative and during these intervals what we observe is that it is the diode which is going to carry the current and that is what we see here. Now, this is of course, is going to be opposite because uh, um, uh, the direction of the current which is assumed positive for the diode. Uh, so, that will be opposite to what is the direction of the current uh, which was assumed positive for the for the output current. So, that is why this is appearing as positive. But uh, what we observe from here is that uh, that your uh, uh, that sometimes the transistor conducts sometimes the diode conducts and it uh, and uh, how the voltage waveforms and current waveforms are getting formed from the output current. Similarly, this is for uh, your T B plus the voltage across the device and uh, this is the current through uh, T B plus. Now, T B plus conducts when the current is negative and that is what we see here that uh, during these interval the current is negative and that is when we see T B plus whenever it is on to be carrying the current. And uh, when the uh, current is positive the, uh, the output current is positive and the switch is turned on we see that the diode D B plus is carrying the current. So, and so, this is the finally the shape of the current waveforms through the devices. And similarly, you can also see the voltage and current waveforms across the, the rest of the devices. Now, let us have some more insight into what is happening here. So, half of uh, this interval uh, let us uh, call it as T 1 by 2. Now, what is T 1? T 1 is equal to 1 by F 1 which is your fundamental frequency. Okay, the, the first harmonic you can say that the fundamental. So, this current whatever is the average that you take place its frequency will be equal to F 1. Here this frequency is F 1. Now, 
over here let us uh, divide this in different different small T s intervals let us call this as uh, the 0 interval 0 and this is T s and this is equal to 2 T s similarly this is 3 T s ok. So, this is one switching time period this is another second switching time period this is the third switching time period. Similarly, we can continue doing it and let us say this is equal to k t s. So, this one here will be equal to k plus 1 t s. Now, here this is let us say is equal to n t s. So, what we are saying is that that your t 1 by 2 interval is divided into n t s switching time intervals that means your n switching intervals are present in half of the, the fundamental let us uh, take it like that. Now this one your duty ratio let us say here the duty ratio is a d1. So, this interval is d1 t s then further this interval let us say this is equal to d2 t s because uh, what we observe here is that that uh, these duty ratios are different. You can see here the duty ratio over here the duty ratio here and here these are all different at each point the duty ratio is different in uh, whenever you have a sinusoidal reference because you have a carrier and you have a sinusoidal reference and you are comparing so different different points the duty ratios are different. So, let us say this is uh, equal to D 3 T s and here because this is the K T s interval let us say this is equal to D K T s and uh, for the K plus 1 interval this is equal to D K plus 1 times T s and uh, this one here this is equal to D n T s. Now, if we have to write the conduction loss for T a plus for let us say the k plus 1 interval. So, for k plus 1 th interval it will be given as integration from k t s to k plus d k plus 1 times t s. I O T and the on state voltage drop let us say this is equal to V S W on while uh, the device is on multiplied by D T and uh, this has to be divided by the switching time period 1 by T S ok. And uh, this we are assuming that during this time the output current is positive because that is only when the transistor T a plus will be conducting. So, what uh, we have done in here is that that this uh, for this k plus 1 net interval your this I O current is what will be getting uh, is what the transistor will be carrying. So, that is why for this interval from k T s to d k plus 1 T s is uh, we multiply the on state voltage drop with the current to obtain the conduction loss and uh, then uh, we integrate and divide it with, uh, with the switching time interval. Similarly, we can write for the diode as well P d a plus current for k plus 1 interval. Uh, we can do a similar thing we can again divide the rest of the half also in, in NTS intervals and uh, then there also the same could be written k t s k plus uh, d k plus 1 times t s in i o t. Now, here this will be multiplied by the on state voltage drop of the diode instead of the transistor and this is when if the current is negative because when the current is negative that is when the diode conducts. Now, what we observe from this 
is that that for each interval each switching time interval this integration is going to be different because first of all your duty ratios are different and secondly the load current the output current is also different in different switching time intervals. So, conduction loss is, is different in each switching time interval. So, now um, if you want to do it by hand it will not be as simple as for as buck converter where we got a very simple expression d i l square into r d s on and that gives you the conduction loss. That is not how simple it is for uh, when you are using edge bridge and want to obtain a sinusoidal output from it. Okay, so, then you have to use some simulation tools to estimate the, the conduction losses. Now, let us also see for the switching loss. So, what we see here is that, that at these points over here, so, this is these are the points where the device is turning on and these are the points where device is turning off. And uh, what we see here is that for each turn on, so these are your turn on, uh, turn on instances. So, what we see is that that each turn on the current with to which it has to reach that is different. Okay, and similarly or during every turn off also we will be observing the same thing that every turn off switching time uh, uh, every switching time period you turn off current means how much it has to turn off by here the current is has to turn off from here then in this interval it has it is a different level here it is a different level here the current level is very small to turn off. So, different switching time periods your turn off current is also different. Your VDC that may be un unchanged, but the current the turn on current and turn off currents are different. So, if we have to write it that means let us say for your turn on your output current I O for the kth interval is different then for some other interval let us say for some mth interval. And similarly for your turn off I O k plus d k plus 1 for this as well this is not equal to your the d k plus 1 or m k m plus 1 at interval the turn off these two currents are also not going to be equal for any kth interval and mth interval. So, your that means your switching loss also. So, if you have the turn on loss which uh, we can write it as half uh, V D C T on K T S I O K T S into F S this will be not equal to half of V D C T on M T S I O M T S into F S. And similarly, we can write for turn off as well. So, your half VDC T off for your K plus 1 TS IO K plus DK plus 1 TS into FS. This is not equal to half of V D C T of M plus 1 T S into I O 
m plus d m plus 1 t s into f s. So, what uh, is the takeaway from here is that your turn on losses and turn off losses each interval is different, each switching time period is different. And not only that, the turn on time and the turn off times are also going to be different. Let us say if, uh, if using a simulation tool you can find out the, the, the turn on currents and turn off currents, but it will be difficult for you to estimate the turn on time and turn off time in different different switching time intervals because the turn on and turn off time they are dependent on different things. They are also uh, a function of the current they has to turn on or turn off. Apart from that we have seen before that turn on and turn off times depends on various other things like temperature and uh, what is the DC bus voltage, several factors uh, are uh, there which make them variable. Similarly, your on state voltage drop that also is not fixed. So, what uh, we get from here is that, that, uh, that uh, these conduction loss and switching loss you can have an estimate of it, but it is difficult to exactly calculate what the conduction loss and switching loss are losses are going to be. Okay. So, uh, simulation tools you can take help of them and uh, you can try to estimate how much is the loss, the semiconductor device loss that is that uh, is taking place in your power electronic converter and from there you can have an estimate of the efficiency. But uh, the actual efficiency you get to know only when you do the experiment there you measure the input voltages and input currents and you measure the output voltages and output currents and from there you get what is the efficiency of your converter. And uh, uh, then uh, now you may be wondering because uh, there are so many other losses that are also taking place. There are magnetic losses, then there are I square losses from different different uh, miscellaneous elements that are present in the converter. So, what is exactly the semiconductor device loss that will be difficult to separate it out. But overall for your uh, thermal design, for your heat sink selection you can uh, use simulation tools to estimate them and based on it uh, then you can select a heat sink uh, and your cooling method and you can perform the experiment, find out the efficiency and uh, then you if required you might have to change the thermal design. So, your current waveforms this also we had seen before. Uh, so, this is your output voltage waveform, the switched voltage waveform, this is the output current waveform and uh, the sinusoidal ones are the, um, the average of them. And from there we previously we had seen this is the DC bus current uh, that you obtain. Okay. Now, this DC bus current you can see here this is a switched current waveform okay. and uh, then this uh, DC bus current uh, multiplied by the ESR of the DC bus capacitor that will be leading to the uh, the losses that takes place in the capacitor. So, what I am um, telling is that that uh, you have a DC bus. So, uh, here you will be having your voltage VDC and your IDC this DC bus current can flow through it and uh, then that it will have its own ESR. So, that is the R ESR if you want to call it as. So, I DC square R ESR will be the loss that will be taking place in the capacitor. So, this is just to give you an idea of the I square R losses that takes place in different elements. So, like that you have so many elements where I square R losses will be taking place and you have to take into account the different ESRs of different passive elements. Now, let us uh, look into the waveforms of unipolar PWM. This uh, is the waveform that uh, we have discussed before. Unipolar PWM you have got uh, two references and these were the two leg voltages VAN and VBN and then accordingly from there the subtraction of these two gives you the output voltage waveform and it varies from um, 0 to VDC and from 0 to 
minus V d C. So, let us look into the, the switch waveforms. So, for the same devices T A plus, D A plus, T B plus and D B plus, I have shown the voltage waveforms and current waveforms. You can see here these different voltage uh, uh, waveforms and uh, these current waveforms I T A plus and I D A plus and this is the output current I O. Now, what you can see here is that that here the shape of the current waveforms, the switch current waveforms uh, is, is, is different because uh, your I O current nature itself is different. And also your uh, V T A plus that shape has also changed. So, now if we calculate the conduction loss and switching loss for this unipolar PWM, the losses that uh, you will be getting will be different than what you will be getting for bipolar PWM. So, what we uh, understand from this is that, that your switching loss and conduction loss not in each switching time interval they are different and depends on uh, other things that uh, we just discussed uh, a while ago. It also depends on the modulation strategy, which modulation strategy you are using for your power electronic converter that play an important role in the total loss that is that takes place and also therefore in the efficiency of the converter. And further these current waveforms which I just showed you for bipolar PWM, the same waveforms are now here shown for unipolar PWM. You can see here the nature of the DC bus current is very different and so obviously your I square R losses that will be taking place in the capacitor will again will also become different. So, overall losses will change if you are using unipolar PWM as compared to when you are bipolar PWM or if you use any other PWM method. So, what are the key points of this lecture? So, what we see that the calculation of your power semiconductor device losses they are non-trivial. Uh, you cannot just simply use some very simple equation and uh, uh, you, you can obtain the device losses. You may use simulation tools to have an estimate of the device losses. And uh, uh, the on state voltage drop and turn on and turn off times uh, they vary on uh, depending on several factors. So, that is why we can only estimate them using simulation tools to know it how much is the total loss that is taking place you have to perform experiments. And uh, also know that the power losses are also dependent on the modulation strategy that you are going to use in your converter. Thank you. Thank you.